Hello and welcome, lords and ladies, to this Age of Empires match. This is going to be the start of a new series that I'm going to do about custom scenarios. I think we have all seen our fair share of random matches, and honestly, I love random matches just as much as anyone else, but I would like to see a lot more custom scenarios. There are a wide variety of fun and creative scenarios that have been made by the community, and I have not seen a lot of, um, I guess, attention and spotlight on a lot of these scenarios, so I've decided to start this series to showcase a lot of the scenarios that are out there. We'll be starting this with CBA, as this scenario is called. CBA is a fun, short uh, scenario revolving around unique units. To start the match, you play as a random civilization, and whatever civilization you end up being assigned, you have four castles that will continuously spawn those units. And if you lose all four of your castles, you are eliminated immediately. Uh, inversely, if you happen to destroy an enemy's castles, all four of them, then they are eliminated. So the objective of the game is to destroy all of your enemy's castles while keeping yours alive. Another aspect of this mode is that everyone starts in the feudal age, with the exception of a few civilizations that start in castle age. And the way you advance through the ages is by getting kills. Different civilizations have different amount of required kills they need to advance to the next civilization. Attack player eight. In addition, Attack player seven. you can obtain villagers by me extra getting raises, raising four. buildings. Attack two. Attack different Attack civilizations four. require different amounts of raises to gain two villagers. With these villagers, you no. can create military buildings. So let's see, I got the Khmer. Interesting civilization. And I know exactly what I'll be up against because everyone spawns their unique units. So let's see. Khmer, good. Good cavalry with their elephants. Unfortunately, I'm against the Italians which create their Genoese crossbow, which counter cavalry. They do some great bonus damage against elephants. So, Khmer are, I, th I believe, is the only exception to spawning unique units. Khmer instead spawn battle elephants. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, but could be just due to a balancing reason. Let's see who we're up against here. We're against Italians and Vikings on this side. And our allies are against Toons and Ethiopians on this side. Um, teal is going to be spawning here. Gray is going to be here. Orange here. And purple here. So as you can see, here are my four castles. And I have three gates and some walls protecting my castles. These gates do count as raises. So in the early game, most people are going to be trying to destroy these gates to gain the amount of raises that they need. You can see Gray is coming forward to try and damage my gate. You get a raise. An interesting aspect about this game mode is that raises are determined by who gets the last hit on the building. So a common strategy is to set Archer players, which most of the time only need one raise to gain villagers, and to set them, you damage the building, so it's down to very low HP, and have the Archer player finish it, and that will count as their raise, and they will get villagers early, and start building production buildings. So this looks to be what Gray is trying to do. Unfortunately, battle elephants are quite bulky, and tend to get in the way. Also, to the side of your castles, you will have your blacksmith and university, which is where you can gain those necessary upgrades as you advance through the ages. 
So I'm gonna go over here. And while Genoese crossbow will counter battle elephants hard, Rattan archers from my Vietnamese ally will counter Genoese crossbow very hard. So let's see what damage we can do here. I'm gonna try and set the Vietnamese player and do damage to these gates. Hopefully he'll be able to finish them, because he does have a lot of Rattan archers down here. An important aspect of this game mode is timing and coordinating your attacks with your allies. So, for example, Byzantine player with cataphracts, hard counters, berserks, and shotel warriors. So he, he's going to be running around trying to deal damage and eliminate these enemy forces of infantry units. Alright, so it looks like Red is going to try and take this gate out. It's going to take him quite a while. But he should be able to do it, as Rattan Archer has such high pierce armor that these Genoese crossbow aren't going to be able to take them out very quickly at all. And if you are new to this game mode and need some pointers, you can see on the top left, player 2 got 1 raise, which equals villager. If you need to know, how many kills and how many raises your civilization needs. You can go to the tooltip, go to the hints, and it will tell you for every civilization in the game, the amount of raises you need for villagers, the amount of kills you need for castle and imperial age. Um, so if I go down to Mur, I need three raises for villagers, 300 kills for castle age, and 600 kills for imperial age. It's going to take me quite a while. But I should be able to get there eventually. <laughs> I think I am actually going ahead over to Orange and see what damage I can do to him. Because he's got Shotel Warriors. Very squishy units. They do not have a lot of HP at all. But they do have very high damage, which means if he can get to our castles. We'll be able to take them out fairly quickly. Oh, and it looks like Orange already has villagers, so he's got some archery range there. I should be able to do a lot of damage here. Teutonic Knights are not a good matchup for me at all. But against Shoto Warriors, I should be able to do quite a bit of damage. gate is at very low health, so it is a risk that Teal runs in with a group of units and takes that out. We should be able to do just fine. I'm going to try and raise these gates and get those raises, because I need three orders. Should be able to get that. Looks like Blue is going to get his villagers. I believe Byzantines need two. Yep. And here we can see an example of a set. Glue did a lot of damage to that gate, brought it to very low health, and he just flared it and told player 4, who is our yellow Mayans player, to take it. Hmm, looks like Teal's just gonna resign. And probably gonna get the win here. It does tend to happen with this mode, people can resign early if they feel they have absolutely no chance, which a lot of people don't like. If you just 
give up and don't play the game now. For now, orange and purple are going to stay in the game. It's probably not going to last long though. This game mode is very hard to win if you are down a player. A 3v4, it's almost impossible to win this game mode, unless you hard counter their civilizations. Because everyone starts with their unique units, with the exception of Mur. If your unique units counter theirs, then you have a chance to win. But, as a general rule, it's not really worth playing if it's a 3v4, or in this case a 2v4. Orange's villagers are right here, and if you lose your villagers, you will have to get more raises to get more. Military buildings being built also count as raises, but you can delete those. If you delete your front gates or your castles to prevent raises, the game will kick you, so make sure not to do that. But we won. Well played, good job by our team. So yeah, this is CBA, and I would highly recommend that anyone who enjoys custom scenarios or fun short games that you don't have a lot of time, highly recommend you pick up CBA. It's a lot of fun, and if you need some practice getting to know the strengths and weaknesses of different unique units, this is a very good game mode for that. And there are quite a few other custom scenarios that are based on CBA and very similar to it. I will be showcasing those throughout this series, but CBA is a good baseline starting point if that is something you are interested in. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you in the next video.